Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tyler here. Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a Svelte Electron application. We're also gonna go over how to use IPC communication and uh, create a little preload script to kind of show you how it all fits in with a Svelte Electron JS application. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, today, we're gonna to be using the Dejit commands to generate our Svelte template. So as you can see right now, I'm just going to open with git bash. You can use PowerShell, uh, terminal, CMD, whatever you want. And I'm just going to type in mpx and then degit digit and then svelte js slash template. And then we're going to name the template. So I'm going to call this electron svelte tutorial. Okay. So when I hit enter, what you'll see is on my desktop, we will now get a brand new folder with our Svelte Electron tutorial. And in fact, if I run npm install and just install all the dependencies and then do npm run dev, what you'll see is we get, um, oh, my bad, I had to cd into this folder, <laughs> cd into electron and then if you hit tab on your keyboard, you can also uh, auto-complete with PowerShell and Bash. So I figured I'd let you know that. Okay, so if we type in npm install and then uh, npm run dev, what you'll see is we have our Svelte Electron application and it'll open on a development port. So you can see right here, it is opening up and then here we have it on localhost uh, 5000. So if we go to localhost HTTP, localhost 5000. And what you'll see is we get a Svelte application in the browser. Now, what we actually want to do is get this into an Electron app. So let's do that. I'm going to type in code dot to open this in Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever text editor you want, though. Okay. And what you'll see is we have all of our files. I'm going to kind of clear up a few of these files, such as the readme.md, since we don't need that. We also don't need this scripts folder, but if you do want to use TypeScript, all you have to do is uh, run this script right here by simply doing uh, node dot slash scripts slash setup. Uh, typescript.js and it'll actually convert it to a TypeScript uh, project. But I'm just going to get rid of that for simplicity's sake. And there we go. So we have this. Now, what we want to do is install Electron. So npm install dash dash save dash dev Electron. Electron. There we go. And that will now go to our package.json folder. I just wait for it to finish installing. Okay. So what you'll see is in our package.json, we now have a dev dependency of Electron. Perfect. Now, what we're going to want to do is add a main um, attribute. So this is going to set where our Electron application starts. And for now, I'm going to just create a folder called Electron and create a file in here called index.js. And this will be the entry point to our Electron app. So to reference that from our package.json, we can do dot slash electron slash index.js. And this will be where our um, Electron application starts, which means we also need to change the start scripts to reflect that. So we can just type in electron dot. And what this will do is it will open, uh, run the electron commands in our current directory, and it'll look for this main scripts, which will then run this index.js file and kickstart our whole app. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's actually quickly create a quick electron application. So I'm gonna import browser window, app, and IPC main uh, equals require electron. We're going to do app.win ready, which returns a promise, which we're going to do that then. And then we're going to run a function when we're ready. I'm going to call it main. I'm going to create that function. I'm going to call it function main. And in here, we're going to run 
um, once our application is ready to go. If you have uh, any questions with Electron, I do have a full uh, tutorial series that I highly recommend you check out if you don't actually know how Electron works. Okay, so I'm going to create a window. I'm going to call it window is equal to a new browser window. And this takes in a width, I'm going to say 800 pixels, a height of, let's say, 600. We're going to set show to false by default. We're going to do auto hide menu bar to true. And then we're going to pass in a web preferences and pass in a preload script. So the preload script is where we actually want to, uh, the file we want to preload into our window. So I'm going to create that real quick preload.js. So we want to load this file into our browser window when we create it. So what we can do is we can use join. Uh, oh, join is not. So we're going to import join from uh, path equals require. There we go. So we're going to bring in join from path and we're going to join our current directory name and then dot slash um, preload.js and this will allow us to load this preload.js into our scripts and with that out of the way that is all we have for our preferences next what we can do is do window.load file which takes in a path to our HTML file what we're going to do is we're going to use join again the reason we're using join is because it's cross-platform so it'll mean that this will work on OSX Linux and Windows so we're going to do join dot dot slash to leave this electron folder and go into the public folder where we have our application. So we're going to go to dot dot slash public slash index.html. And this is where we have our public assets and all of our build files. So once we load the file, what we can do is we can do window dot on ready to show. So this vent fires when our application DOM is ready to uh, be visible. And we can do window.show. So we'll pass in that function. There we go. So when our application is ready to show, we'll actually show the window. And that's why it's set to false by default, so we don't have any annoying flickering. Next, I'm going to include one more variable, and I'm going to call it is dev, And I'm going to set it equal to the inverse of app.isPat. What this will do is it'll check if we're in a production environment. If the application is packed, then we're clearly not in development. So that's why I'm inverting it. And what we'll do is we'll do if, or uh, we'll do window dot, actually yeah, we'll do if is dev window dot web contents dot open dev tools. So if we're in development mode, we're just gonna open up the development tools. And uh, that's all I really wanted to do with that. Okay, so now that we have this out of the way, we can actually try uh, loading our application. So let's do that. Let's go back to a terminal and do npm run start. There we go. You'll see we get electron dot and we get a whole bunch of errors, which is not very pleasant. But luckily, these are very easy to fix. If you look at the error, it says the file is not found and it's coming from our HTML. So the reason that is, I actually don't quite know, but we just have to remove the slash here. All of those, if you remove the slash, what you'll see, if we now restart the application, you will see we have our Svelte application, but we're not done. We're gonna now set up IPC communication so we can communicate between these two processes. Um, while we're at it, in the HTML file though, I am going to change the title to say Svelte Electron App. There we go. Okay, now that we have this out of the way, one thing we're gonna wanna do is create slash populate our preload script. So what we wanna be able to do is get the application version, let's say, because we don't have access to that in this window, but we want it, so how can we do that? Well, I'm gonna destructure IPC renderer and context bridge equals require uh, require electron 
And what we can do is we can create an API object. I'm going to call it window API is equal to a object right here. And we are also going to expose this API object. So context bridge expose in main world. It takes in the application API key. I'm going to call this API and the object that we want to expose. And this API can be accessible by doing window dot API. There we go. Now, if we want to say get the version from the render process to the main process, we can do something like this. We can do get version or whatever you want to call the function. It's going to be a function, which then we can do IPC renderer dot invoke, which expects a promise. We're going to do get slash version. You can put whatever you want in here. This doesn't, this is dependent on whatever you want to call it. This is just the name of what we want to send. And we can pass in any arguments if we want by doing something like this. Okay. There we go. So we have this git version right there. Perfect. So now inside of our index.js, we are going to listen for that git version. IPC main dot handle. We'll do handle once git slash version. So this git slash version is the same thing as this. If I called this just git version, then this would have to match that. We're going to return um, at dot git version. There we go. So we're just going to use a little bit of uh, arrow syntax and destructure it and return the version. Perfect. So that is actually it for our index.js and our preload scripts. Now, you may be wondering, okay, how do we actually use this in Svelte? So let's demonstrate that. Perfect. If I run npm start, what you'll see is nothing changed, but that's a good thing. What we can do though is console.log in our development tools, the window.api. And what you'll see is we have git version, which is our function from before. And what we can do is we can do um, we can console.log api.git version. And what you'll see is we get a promise. And when we get it fulfilled, you see we get 1.0, which is our version. So how do we actually implement this with say Svelte? Well, it's basically just that simple. We can go into our source folder right here. Um, I'm just going to take out these props. And inside of our app.svelte file, what we can do is I'm just going to close these style tags. And up here, I'm going to create a variable called version, which I'm going to set to nothing by default. Then in here, what I'm going to want to do, I'm going to create a button. And we're going to pass in the version. And we're going to say version. Or we'll say get version. There we go. So if we click this, we will get uh, nothing. So what we want to do is actually handle this click. So how do we do that? Well, we can do on click handler and we can also do a once handler because we only want to be able to call this function once because in our main dot uh, index dot JS file, we said we only want to listen for this once. So it's probably a good idea to add this once in here. So what we can do is we can do something like this. We can either destructure it, which looks a little messy. So I'm just going to call it git version right there. And then up here, I'm going to create that const git version is equal to an asynchronous function, where then what we can do is we can do version. Version is equal to await API window. Uh, so we can do API dots get with capital version. And what you'll see is when we run this and we click this button, what's going to happen is it's going to call this, re-render the version in here, and then we'll be good. So let's try this out. I'm going to close out of this. And when we rerun this through npm run start, what you'll see, oh yes, so 
right now when we're starting up the application, uh, what we also want to do is call build, npm run build. So currently the reason why our changes weren't showing up um, in the Svelte side of things is because we're not actually building the um, JavaScript code every single time we run start. So we want to do that. So now that we've done this, if we restart the application and do npm run start, we will see our button that says version, get version. When we click it, we get version is 1.0. So, and you can see that we can click it as many times as we want, but it's only gonna call that function once. So just like that, we have a Svelte Electron app, and we're able to click a button and get the version. And in fact, if we wanna say, put version up here, there we go, and restart this, you can see that it works just as you'd expect. There we go. So hello undefined. And when we click it, version goes to one. Perfect. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you is how you can package this application using Electron Builder. So what we're going to want to do is install Electron Builder. So npm install dash dash save dash dev to install it as a development dependency. And then we'll do Electron dash builder. And when we hit enter, we should have this installing. Oh, I spelled Electron wrong. <laughs> E-L-E-C, Tron Builder. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so when we build this out, it should install Electron Builder. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this name because it's not really needed. And then what I'm going to want to do is in our package.json script, we're going to create a build script. I'm going to call it package. Um, because that's kind of what it does, but build is probably another good term you can use. And what we're going to want to do is run npm run build to actually compile our Svelte application. And then to actually compile our application, we're going to run npm run, uh, actually we'll just call it electron dash builder. There we go. And when we run this, what you will see is we will actually get npm run package. What you'll see is when we run this, we will actually get um, the Electron Builder creating the package. Now, because currently right now, we're not using or specifying an icon, anything like that. We're gonna have the default icon, but what you'll see is it's gonna be in this distribution folder. And I'll show you this real quick by opening Reveal and File Explorer. And what you see, is we have our dist right here folder and when i click in here what you'll see is we get um, an unpacked version of our application with all of the files we also get a setup file so if i click on this you can see svelte app setup and what you can see is it actually just opens it right here and when i click get version we get 1.0 and i can pin it to the taskbar and come back to it, and there it is. Just like that. We have created a Svelte Electron.js application. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, subscribe, and until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.